Tell us what is the singularity? A couple of steps. The first step is for computers to actually match what humans can do. Computers that rival and exceed human intelligence. I'm going to show you why these latest advancements from OpenAI might just be the first signs that we're entering towards the technological singularity. And I'm going to show you that from OpenAI's own words themselves. Now obviously we aren't there yet with GPT-4, but oddly enough it's starting to exhibit some behaviors and capabilities that might suggest that it's pretty close. For instance, GPT-4 was able to pass the bar exam within the 90th percentile, as well as other tests like the LSAT and a ton of AP classes such as AP Calculus. What makes these achievements so important is that many of those tests require the ability to reason. Although there are variations, most people who subscribe to the notion of the singularity believe that when it comes, we will upload our consciousness into a computer and live forever. It will be the death of death. And for a singularity like that to happen, we need two things. Computers that are as smart as us and the ability to upload our brains to them. Now has the capability to process images, video, audio and text. Let's explore what factors aside from that might push us closer to the technological singularity. Pretty far down in OpenAI's technical report on GPT-4, there is a passage that is really not getting near enough attention from the media. This passage is located in their risks and mitigation section and says, The additional capabilities of GPT-4 led to new risk surfaces. To understand the extent of these risks, we engaged over 50 experts from domains such as long-term AI alignment risks, cybersecurity, bio-risk, and international security to adversarially test the model. Their findings specifically enabled us to test model behavior in high-risk areas, which require niche experience to evaluate, as well as assess risks that will become relevant for very advanced AIs, such as power-seeking. Then, as we read on deeper into the report, we see this passage. Novel capabilities often emerge in more powerful models. Some that are particularly concerning are the ability to create and act on long-term plans, to accrue power and resources, power-seeking, and to exhibit behavior that is increasingly agentic. OpenAI just announced ChatGPT plugins, a way for ChatGPT to interact with the real world. This is the fourth release OpenAI has had this month alone, and it is huge. Plugins give ChatGPT access to new information that ChatGPT didn't have before, like real-time or recent news. OpenAI themselves are hosting two main plugins that completely supercharge ChatGPT's capabilities. The web browser plugin allows ChatGPT to finally read from the internet. An insane demo shows a question being asked with ChatGPT, not only showing the answers, but also the steps and sources is taken to get there. For code, ChatGPT was already great at writing and debugging code. However, with OpenAI's new code interpreter plugin, ChatGPT can actually do one extra step, actually running that code. Right now, the plugin is limited to Python. The code interpreter demo shows various use cases. One of them shows the CSV file being uploaded and understood. ChatGPT is able to perform data analysis and create visualizations from the file without a line of code even being written. Another one shows an image being uploaded and described. Then, ChatGPT is able to make modifications to to the image's size, which the user can then download, without a line of code even being explicitly written. But AI also released the Retrieval plugin, which is open source and allows ChatGPT to easily obtain document snippets from a knowledge base including your own. Lastly, I wanted to show this crazy demo by GDB, the co-founder of OpenAI. In this clip, ChatGPT is asked to take the first five seconds of a video clip and extract it. And it does it. No video editing software or FFmpeg wizardry required. This isn't all. OpenAI has basically created a plugin app store where it can already connect with tools like OpenTable or Wolfram. This example here shows ChatGPT using multiple plugins in one prompt. It uses the OpenTable plugin to find a vegan restaurant in SF, just normal ChatGPT to generate a simple recipe, the Wolfram Alpha plugin to calculate the calories for the recipe, and finally the Instacart plugin to order the ingredients for this recipe. To create a new plugin, all someone has to do is upload some generated OpenAPI files and then literally just tell ChatGPT what their API is used for. That's it. ChatGPT figures out the rest, like magic. If magic also replaced backend engineers. My hope is that instead of automating away humans completely, it augments them to move faster and work better. You know, it's pretty, pretty stereotypical. Anyways, point being, these things work and they are smart um, and they're only going to get smarter. So here's the wild thing. Like six months ago, we didn't even have ChatGPT. Now we've got ChatGPT4 and plugins and integrations and text to image and text to video. Imagine where we're going to be in five years. We are going to be like... The technology in Star Trek 
is going to look primitive compared to where we're going to be in five years. Mark my words. Your words are marked, David. And mark your words, I will, David. David, your words are marked. And thank you, everyone else, for letting me use your videos. I didn't ask, but this is a very exciting time to be alive. A very exciting time to be alive, and an extremely exciting time in the history of humanity in the, in the, in the her story of humanity we're headed into and we're actually already in this in this in this red we're in this knee of the singularity we've actually been in it for a little while soon things are going to change very very quickly the cat is out of the bag cognitive agents are going to become commonplace both for individuals as well as businesses watch david shapiro David Shapiro is covering all this. Bill Gates is talking about it. David Shapiro is covering Bill Gates, talking about it. Cognitive agents are coming, and they're going to be cognitive agents that are on your phone, for example, and they're tracking your, your movements. They're tracking your, like, everything. They're tracking how long it takes you. They're tracking all of the data about you. And this isn't like, oh, big, creepy, big brother. They're, they're coming out to track all your data. They're going to be doing it to develop a cognitive agent that is essentially a digital version of you. It's going to be you slowly, over time, uploading yourself into this device. Just sim like that'll just be how it is. It's just built in. Already, the phones and algorithms do this. They, they predict what you want to see. They predict your actions. They predict you in the future. These cognitive agents are doing the same thing. They're just trying to predict you, but now they're looking at you as an entire person rather than the business's version of you, if that makes sense. And they're not here yet. I think I don't know they're not public I haven't seen them yet and I'm trying to keep up to date on these things but they're coming they're, they are coming the, you know theoretically these agents do serve as our teachers our guides maybe they are it's they can serve as a teacher's assistant from a young age like in school you know, all, all students having an individual individualized teacher or like guidance to help explore their curiosities to help them learn would be very useful and Theoretically, that would be a very good investment for a government to make. I, I feel like that's a large output of return, if that makes sense. There would be a lot of benefit that comes from letting students have agents that can teach them individually rather than paying teachers. Not that I'm anti-teachers, but I'm anti the need for human labor if we have technology that can help us. I just want to clarify, I don't mean that the AI has to replace all the teachers, but I mean like one human teacher and all of the students have an AI assistant so that class doesn't need to be interrupted as often. It's not that the human doesn't have to be there, but like our teachers need help. Our, our, the people in the working class can use technology to help. We don't need to suffer because of shitty propaganda. GG, that's right. Technology had, ugh, humans have always relied on technology to help us even going as far back as possible, even if we consider fire as one of the first technologies, or rocks, right? We, we utilize technology to make dealing with the environment easier. Why would we deny technology here to make life harder for humans? Why would we not lean into this to make life better for all of humanity? So the singularity is here, but the singularity is for the people, not for the owners at the top. Okay, sorry, I don't mean to get political. Of course, the technology that we have, the mega corporations will have more advanced technology. For example, OpenAI and Microsoft have ChatGPT4 Bing Plus Copilot. That's a pretty intense AI, right? That Copilot is kind of like that cognitive agent. It's the, it's the business agent that Bill Gates was talking about. And however, this is versus the open source llama that got hacked and like released. And now all these groups are working on modifying it. And I saw just today, somebody did enough fine tuning that this, there's a 7 billion parameter model that can run on like a PC or like a laptop is now giving answers that are roughly equivalent with ChatGPT or like GPT-4, theoretically. I don't know. I, I looked into it. it. They were some pretty cool answers. They were some pretty cool answers. There's a Twitter thread about it. I'll post it below. Anyways, and even besides just that, there are companies that are willing to open source this information. There are groups working towards making data free. Like we, we are in the information age and like, AI is going to help us be in the information age for everybody and not just the people that can afford it. Uh, and we're here, you know, there's no point fear-mongering about it. I see a lot of videos fear-mongering about it. I think this is part of the reason why they want to ban TikTok, maybe? 
as well because TikTok builds I think they build a cognitive agent about you that's really good um TikTok algorithms are able to show you things that like you might not even know about yourself or you're like you're like actively like you're telling your you're just, like pushing it away from yourself to like I don't know just like dismiss it and like get it out of my head but like it's still there it's underlying um and TikTok can push a lot of those things to the forefront which I think is good for individual development. Anyways, the singularity is here. The singularity is based. The singularity is cracking. I don't know. Like, let's enjoy it. I hope the videos I put in the beginning were able to at least give that impression a little bit. I will try and leave resources for what you can learn more about individually. Um, but. We should be fighting for the technology to be for the people. We're fighting for technology rights as well as human rights because uh, it's all intertwined. Because if we don't have technology rights in the information age, we don't have human rights. Um, so AI rights are human rights. Not quite, but autonomy rights are autonomy rights and we should be fighting for autonomy rights. Okay, anyways. <laughs>